afternoon to all our students and uh, our speaker for today. Uh, we are very proud to have uh, Major Manish Chandra, the speaker for today for the topic on cyber security. Uh, and uh, with us, of course, I think all of you are familiar. I'm Ms. Sarah Malar and we also have Ms. Kali Sarvi with us today. So thank you very much, uh, Major Manish, to uh, take up the time in your busy schedule. I'm sure you're very busy. Uh, to have a sharing session with our students today. Thank you very much. So before that, uh, to the audience, we have all our students who are basically from the DSC Honors Management Information System program. So to all our students, welcome and thank you for joining the session. Uh, so I would like to give a brief introduction uh, about our speaker today. So this our speaker, Major Manish Chandra, uh, is the Chief Technology Officer of Permits leading the cyber security consulting delivery. He is a former engineer officer of the Indian Army and possesses over 30 years of in-depth information security and information management experience in intelligence organizations, military organizations, and commercial organizations in a number of countries such as India, Sri Lanka, Brunei, Ethiopia, and prior to joining Firmus, uh, Manish led the security cons consulting practice in PwC Consulting Services at Malaysia. He has been instrumental in key national level information security projects, a major national cyber security strategy project linked to the critical national information infrastructure for the Malaysian government, setting up of the Indian and Bruneian Computer Emergency Response Team, other national security initiatives of the Brunei government, creation of the national ICT security infrastructure for Ethiopia. So I guess you can see our speaker today, he has a lot of vast experience uh, in the area and he's very happy here today to share with us uh, his knowledge. So I think I will uh, invite maybe Ms. Kale to start off the discussion for today's topic and the sharing session. Okay. Thank you so much, Ms. Um, Sarvamala. Uh, welcome to the session, Ms. Uh, Major Manish Chandra. And thank you so much for accepting our invitation and uh, being part of this uh, session uh, this afternoon. Uh, actually, uh, sir, I just want to give a little a brief uh, introduction because I'm the lecturer for this subject, Information Security Management. So basically, we cover the theoretical part, which is uh, the security elements, the threats, the vulnerabilities, and then we to discuss a little bit about policy, uh, laws, regulation, and then we move slowly on how to apply, uh, you know, uh, in terms of risk assessment and how we can come up with uh, a framework, risk of, uh, assessment a framework so that, you know, organizations are ready uh, to, you know, make sure that, you know, they're ready in terms of uh, protecting the organization from uh, a cyber attack or any kind of attack in that say. So I think that's theoretical that we are learning. So we are definitely uh, glad that, you know, you are coming here to share from the industrial perspective or more of, uh, you know, of with, your, with your vast experience uh, about uh, this topic, which is security management. And we have narrowed down into cyber security. So I definitely, we can't wait to hear more from you. So please, uh, please uh, welcome uh, Major Manish Chandra. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um... Honored to be here. Okay, um, and uh, warm welcome to everyone. Uh, let me get started. Now, this is an introduction to cybersecurity and information security management systems, in short, known as ISMS. So, not going too deep into the topic, but more of an introduction. Please feel free to ask me questions at any stage. Okay, now this is how I intend to go about this. I will give you an intro to information and cybersecurity. After that, a brief on impacts of cybersecurity incidents and news and statistics, which are quite recent. After that, we'll take on what would be a suggested, what would be a, a you know, approach to cybersecurity, which we, which we in the industry consider as important. And then we will get into ISO 27001, which is the standard for information security management systems. Then a short uh, set on how ISMS benefits an organization. And then uh, there were a couple of questions. One was cybersecurity in relation to industry 4.0. 
as well as cybersecurity as a career. So we will take a look at those two as to one, how does cybersecurity relate to Industry 4.0 and what you really need to do to launch yourself in a career with uh, security, okay? Right, now what, what, is, what is information security? So before we get into what is information security, we need to understand what is information? Okay, now this is defined in ISO 27002. So there is, when we talk of ISO 27002, ISO 27002 is the guideline uh, international standard for ISO 27001. So it has defined information as an asset which has value to an organization and consequently needs to be protected. So information could be in any form. Now I've written over here the most basic form printed or written on paper. I expect this to be a little bit interactive. So now I will ask anyone to tell me whether information can be in any other form. Unless of course, interactive is not possible. So, yeah. Okay, we have one recorded yeah. audio. Okay, that's correct. What else? Right, I, I think stored electronically, so recorded audio is stored electronically, transmitted electronically or by post shown on corporate videos or presentations, displayed or published on the internet, as well as spoken in conversations. Okay, so what 27002 also defines is that whatever form the information takes or the means by which it is shared or stored, it should always be appropriately protected. You have information in your head also. We can't put you in chains. There are other means to protect that information. Any thoughts on how we can do that? Anyone? So, uh, excuse me, sir. Can I answer that? Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's likely. Um, uh, socializing with someone, we can share our knowledge, like from our mind, we can just share it. Yes, so that is leakage of information. How do I prevent it? How to prevent it? Uh, maybe some PNCs, if uh, like non-disclosure agreement is signed. Very good. So we look at confidentiality agreements. Okay, but confidentiality agreements are of little use unless you are able to enforce it, which means confidentiality agreement must also be related to a enforcement mechanism. Okay, for instance, in Malaysia, you have laws for agreements. So if you have a breach of agreement, the law will en enable you to enforce action on that breach. Okay, right. So information security is the protection of information from a wide range of threats in order to ensure business continuity, to minimize business risk, to maximize return on investments. Now you would hear the return on investments a lot when you get into your career. Frankly, business is uh, uh, you know, something in which the whole intention is to make money. Okay, business is not for philanthropy, business is not for uh, looking after the environment. The primary requirement, the primary objective of business is to make money. So maximize return on investment is the prime objective of business, okay? Increases business opportunities, improves security posture and culture. So information security is not something you buy, it is something that you do, okay? You cannot buy information security. Okay, in short, we have uh, something known as CIA in security. Another set of terms which is used very often, C stands for confidentiality, 
I stands for integrity, A stands for availability. Okay, so information security is intended to ensure confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Integrity means safeguarding, accuracy, and co completeness of information. It does not mean being truthful. Okay, you would have seen that there is a dichotomy over here. Has anyone noticed any challenge over here? Any dichotomy? Okay, so confidentiality and availability are inversely related. Higher the confidentiality, lower the availability and vice versa. Okay, the simple reason for that is as you increase confidentiality, the controls that you put in place will reduce the ease of access to a particular bit of information. Once the ease of access is reduced, availability goes down. So when we uh, actually implement security in business, this is something which we have to pay a lot of attention to. Some Many a time, confidentiality takes a backseat to availability. Okay, at that time, you cannot come with an approach, no, confidentiality is all important. It is not. Right, now what is cybersecurity? Another term which is used a lot. There is a standard from the ISO 27000 series. The standard is ISO 27032, which says that cybersecurity or cyberspace security is defined as the preservation of CIA of information in cyberspace. So cyberspace is defined as the complex environment resulting from the interaction of people, software and services on the internet or basically on a network. Okay, it does not exist in physical form. So cybersecurity, you could relate to IT security. They're willy nilly, almost the same thing. However, the way people are using cybersecurity at present, they are considering it as a synonym of information security. That to be true is incorrect. Okay, cybersecurity is meant. So in case you are asked, you should be able to guide people. Right, there are certain components for cybersecurity uh, something which we talk about in consulting space every day. So that is people, process, and technology. These are the basic components which comprise every, every governance mechanism that we put in place. So people is related to the organizational staff and any other related people, for instance, your business partners. Processes are the business processes which enable the business to be carried out. Technology is what is used by the organization either to enable a process or to enable a product. A little more detail, so people is who we are. So the people who use or interact with information could be management, could be employees, could be business partners, could be service providers, could be customers, could be regulators. All of them comprise people. There are different aspects of people-related security. Processes relate to work practices or workflow. Some examples are access management, whether physical or logical. When we say logical, it means access to digital technology or to cyber security or to cyber technology. Okay. Change request process. ICT is information and communications technology, the help desk or the service desk management, identity management, incident reporting, procurement third party services management. This is just an example. There are, there are myriad processes, myriad policies, which an organization uses. Okay, for security, there are generally between 20 to 25 policies. Technology is what we use to improve or automate what we do. So these, this is something which we are extremely familiar with. Your servers, network elements, desktop or laptops, applications, your network, uh, CCTV, air conditioning, power supply. 
Okay, any query as to why I've included air conditioning, door access systems, fire control systems, power supply over here? Or you understand? I have a query on that, sir. Air conditioning and fire control system. Is it so like it, IoT? Yeah, very correct. So this is where we are now getting into part of IoT. Okay, or you could, IoT being considered as part of Industry 4.0, so this is where we get into industry 4.0. Although in reality, this has been around for quite some time. Okay. Right. Now, certain impacts of security incidents, you need to know this because you need to know what can happen if security is breached. Okay. Now, you could have drop in enterprise valuation. A good example is Yahoo. When Yahoo was being sold, it was also the subject of the largest data breach in history. All its 6 billion users were, sorry, 3 billion users were, their accounts and uh, passwords were breached. Okay, so the valuation of Yahoo on paper dropped by 350 million US dollars. In reality, it dropped in the region, region of around 1 billion plus US dollars. Okay, there would be loss of business opportunities. For instance, you are bidding for a tender. If your uh, bid is leaked out, you may lose the bid because somebody else will underbid you. Okay, financial loss, fraudulent pay, payments. This is happening a lot in the industry at present. A lot of people get emails with invoices asking them to pay and people do make payments. Later on, they find that it's a fraud. Nigerians are masters at this as of now. Penalties. Okay, so breach of personal data. In Malaysia, you have the Personal Data Protection Act. It has penalties for breach of personal data. In Singapore also, you have a personal data act. Those breaches are uh, fined. There, there are a number of companies who have had to pay a fine. In Europe, you have a much more stringent regulation where the fines go into millions and billions of dollars or euros, okay? Litigation, you lose intellectual property, people can sue you. Loss of reputation goes without saying. Any breach will cause a loss of reputation. Case in point, CIMB. Okay, CIMB lost a lot of business, lost a lot of customers because of repeated breaches over the past three years. Now, cyber risks are trending upwards. Okay, can anyone tell me what is the size of the third largest economy in the world by in terms of GDP, uh, uh, gross domestic product, GDP? Anyone? Mm, the third largest country that has the highest GDP? No, the third largest economy, yes, by country. Oh, economy, okay, okay. Um... Oh, actually, I don't know. Uh, let me think. Uh, can I have a try? <laughs> Japan? Is yeah. it Japan? Yeah, I think Very Japan. good. It is Japan. Any idea what is the size of its economy? Uh, 5.6 trillion. trillion. Okay. So it's somewhere in the region of 6 trillion. It used to be about 6.7 trillion. So as you can see, cyber crime damages or cyber crime is around the size of the third largest economy in the world. Okay, gives you some idea of the size of this monster. Okay. Globally, 49% organizations said they have been a breach, they have been a victim of fraud and economic crime. Now, these figures are always underreported. In reality, it would be somewhere in the range of about 80%. Okay, data breaches cost an average of $3.8 million per incident. 
it's not just the incident itself it is also the investigation the restitution you know all the all the damages that you have to pay out so it works out to about 3.8 million this is not us us is much more okay this is the average global cost now 25% of cyber attacks against enterprises will uh, involve iot devices this is as of last year we haven't yet got the updated figure for this year but as you can see uh, the impact on industry 4.0 well noted okay industry 4.0 unfortunately started off with a bang without really considering security hence major major issues cyber criminals increasingly using artificial intelligence and machine learning to conduct attacks we in the legal world in the nice people world we take time to adopt technology we are slow we are measured we feel we are very considered the cyber criminals have no such hurdles they jump head first not just feet first head first into new technology because they look at immediate returns and it gets them okay we are using artificial intelligence and machine learning to improve security but well before us the criminals have been using this to breach security so as we are evolving they are evolving too right most network intrusions are the result of compromised user passwords and usernames the, the weakest link in security is always humans conversely the strongest link in security is also humans okay now when we have too many accounts those of you who love the internet who have got an account on 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 twitter or instagram on facebook on every other social media plus emails you have a lot of accounts how do you manage the passwords for each of them most of you would be using the same or similar passwords for all these accounts which is a bonanza for a hacker you break one uh, account you know, you are able to use that criteria that password for all the others and sooner or later you are able to break into the other accounts too okay now the world economic forum's biggest cyber crime trends definitely talked of cold war there is a cold war between east and west so the east being north korea china and so on the west being the so called industrialized countries it is intensifying there is the rise of artificial intelligence for both cyber crime and its counter means of communications are getting more weaponized you all use your mobile phones a number of you use mobile phones to store also your usernames and passwords unfortunately you also have a lot of applications on your mobile phones how many of you know that there is a log out button for each application on the mobile phone how many anyone yeah i know yeah. how many actually use it do you use it I'm yeah using it only not really just leave it on yeah okay so keep in mind when you leave it on the session is still on which means if somebody hacks into your mobile phone they are able to get into that application okay unfortunately mobile phones have been treated like this is my phone nothing will happen but mobile phones have become one of the biggest source of breaches people always thought ios cannot be breached that was a fallacy ios was had less breaches simply because it was less used now that it is being used a lot the hackers have started targeting it okay 5g and the iot could make us all more vulnerable to cyber attack why do you think 5g will make us more vulnerable to cyber attack Basically, because you can increase the speed to become so the hacker can have much much more faster than all the wifi yeah speed. so you are you are able to you, are, you know uh, increase the uh, speed of attacks you are able to increase the attack uh, machines the devices which you use to attack because 5g offers that speed 
So because of because of uh, that, it has the reverse factor of breaches also. Businesses have to start rethinking their approach to the cloud, which has already happened. Ever since COVID, a lot of businesses have had to, even though they didn't want to, they have had to move to the cloud. Simply because people have to work from home or from other locations and uh, being able to access on-premises systems has proved increasingly difficult. Okay, Malaysia is also affected. Now, the, the statistics which I'm about to show you are quite old, but this is the latest statistics available in Malaysia. Okay, uh, possible economic damage in Malaysia due to cybersecurity incidents hit a staggering 12.2 billion. Okay, Malaysia's GDP is 296 billion. So this was the amount of the damage. A full 4% of GDP. And this is GDP of yesteryear. Current GDP is less. Organizations in Malaysia that have come across cybersecurity incidents, okay, uh, what they have found is data exfiltration and data corruption are the biggest concerns. Can anyone tell me, you, we had talked of CIA, data corruption would relate to what? Is it integrity, sir? Yeah, absolutely. It relates to integrity. So when the data corruption, for instance, consider you are supposed to receive a salary of 10,000 ringgit. Okay, a hacker, a hacker gets in, changes it, changes, reduces one zero. Okay, so instead of getting 10,000, you now get 1,000. Would you be happy? Obviously, no. Right? So, um, because of these incidents, the confidence of the organizations to get into the digital economy is getting reduced. Okay, however, despite the reduction in confidence, most of them are getting into digital, uh, digital technologies simply because it is survival at present. Okay, now by Barnama in 2019, what they said is cyber crimes involving losses of 67.6 million were reported in the first three months of 2019. Okay, most, three most common types of cyber crimes were cheating via telephone calls. Uh, there is a term which we use in the industry for cheating via telephone calls. Anyone? Yes, I faced it. I getting a WhatsApp call. Yeah. So, so what do you call? Yes. What, do you, what is the term that you use? Um, oh. Sorry. Okay. So for for email fraud, for email. Um, oh, phishing. Yeah. So for email, we use phishing. What do we use for phone calls? Scam. Is it phone scam? No, we call it phishing. Unfortunately. Okay. Quite close. But that's how uh, that's how it's, it's voice so wishing. Okay, so e financial fraud recorded 212 cases involving losses of 21.5 million, and this is of 2019. 2020 reported much higher figures. Certain statistics. Now this is from a site called World's Biggest Data Breaches. They like to they like to make a nice painting out of all this. As you can see, Facebook quite regular, half a half a billion, and before that, almost half a billion. You have the uh, Microsoft breach. You have the largest breach ever is, of course, the Indian Aadhaar. After that, the second largest breach is Yahoo. But there have been a lot of breaches. Marriott International breach was also half a million, and Marriott International breach. Because of their breach, Marriott International was fined to the tune of around 20 million euros. Which is around 100 million ringgit. So the fines are not small. Okay, and hackers are not partial. They will hack any site from which they can gather information. Some time back, 
adult friend finder uh, adult friend finders was also hacked and they managed to get a lot of money from 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 people who didn't want their that they are using adult friend finders to be exposed okay so any 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 means of monetizing they would use bitcoin is a favored method of payment another set of statistics okay again this is a little bit dated this is 2 years ago since 2013 14 billion plus almost 15 billion uh, records were lost or stolen okay which translates to 71 records every second this has only increased so based on today's statistics you will be looking at something around 100 records per second okay and every one of them is used to try and monetize and at least 50% are monetized uh, do you do you guys understand what i mean when i say monetized anyone is it when the the what's it the victim pays up the ransom money in case yeah, of so either so when we say monetize which means convert to money either by ransom payment or by selling it okay right now uh, you know when asked about the impact of successful phishing attacks security leaders cited following con uh, consequences so most of them lost data some of them had uh, uh, were infected with ransomware almost 50% were affected with ransomware and ransomware people have made large payouts including organizations in malaysia okay now why should we bother okay so it is not that whether you will be hit or not you will be hit so we are now looking at if when you will be hit what would you do okay uh, nations have also started talking not only about prevention but also about resilience which means recovery when you are hit how soon will you be able to detect how soon will you be able to stop the attack how soon you will be able to recover from that attack and resume services it is just not possible to prevent all attacks even in the army we never cater for stopping all attacks we always cater for okay there will be an attack how do we direct it in a way that we can take most advantage of it that's the same strategy which is adopted in it also for any attacks you have an attack you will see how you will be able to direct it to a place where you can handle it more easier more easily more quickly with least damage okay complexity is increasing so there is a need of increase in skills so for all of you who are looking at cyber security as a career it's just like uh, medical science learning or any other science for that matter learning never stops you are learning every day every minute from everyone the moment you feel again like any other information that you are now god uh, well i think it's time to go and meet the god because you won't be able to do anything okay now when we approach cyber security we 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 tend to use security standards as frameworks so that we are able to uh, you know follow a proper structure we don't miss things the most uh, common one is iso 27001 and that is also the only standard against which we can get certified for security we also have nist cyber security framework latest version is 1.1 you have the cis controls and measures and metrics you have the iso 22301 which is for business continuity you have the iso 27005 which is used for risk management you have iso 15408 which was also known as common criteria which is very specific for certain products in addition to that you have industry specific standards and regulations 
like PCI DSS, also called as payment card industry data security standard. Okay, uh, anyone knows what NISC stands for? Come on, come on, very common. Uh, National Institute of Standard and Technology, is it? Very good. So it is an American government agency, National Institute of Technology of uh, Standards and Technology, which develops standards for American government agencies. So with a certain modification, with a few modifications, you can use it, not the old standard, but most parts of it. It's quite a useful set of publications. Okay, now we will get into domains of 27001. These are, there are 14 domains, 14 key control domains in 27001 with a total of 114 control elements. I won't spend too much of time on this. I will go through quite quickly. So you have, you know, management direction for information security. So it covers a set of controls for management direction, internal organization, mobile devices and teleworking, uh, human resources, so prior to employment, during employment, okay, then termination and change of employment, then getting into asset management, uh, which also talks of responsibility of assets, classification, media handling, then access control, business requirements, etc., user access, then user responsibilities, cryptography controls, Okay, uh, secure areas, which is now physical security, which includes equipment also, includes operational procedures and responsibilities, protection from malware. So, uh, also, an important aspect is always clock synchronization, then control of operation software, technical vulnerability management, network or communication security management, security requirements of information systems. Okay, so... And we always end with compliance, okay? Uh, all these standards end with compliance because after you put all the measures in place, you need to see that those measures are being followed, which happens from the compliance point of view. Any queries on 27,001 before we move forward? Um, no, sir. Ah, uh, no. Okay, right. Now, how do you think a ISMS or an information security management system benefit an organization? Okay, now for any organization, what ISMS does is it creates awareness on information security. It helps the organization comply with legislation. Every regulator has got, uh, has got regulations with regard to information security in most of the developed countries and Malaysia, okay? It reduces risks for information leakage. It prevents unauthorized alteration of critical information, which is your information integrity. It enables prompt detection of data leakage and fast reaction, which is what resilience is all about. And as a business enabler, a lot of clients for organizations like uh, some of my clients, they ask whether I am certified to ISO 27001. If I am certified to ISO 27001 or any other security standard, it enables the company to feel confident of giving business to me. Otherwise, that company will feel, why shouldn't I go for another service provider who is suitably certified? Okay. Now, all information security measures are of little use. If users are unaware, you can create all the policies in the world, but if you hold them in your hand and hide them away, saying me, mine, and you know I only, I won't share with anyone, then it is completely useless because nobody knows what they have to do. So when you develop policies, you have to raise awareness on those policies. If you don't raise awareness, you also won't be able to prosecute people if they breach those policies. Also enables the organization to comply with regulatory requirements. For instance, in Malaysia, Bank Nagara has got the risk management in technology. Um, 
Anyone knows an organization called Paynet? Has anyone heard of the organization called Paynet? Anyone? Uh, no, sir. This is first time. <laughs> okay, so yeah, Paynet is one of the organizations under Bank Nagara Malaysia. Payment Network. Paynet for short. Okay, used to be called My Clear some time back. Okay, so you have these uh, ATM machines, especially at the filling stations, MEPS ATM machines, they are under Paynet. Okay, now uh, they have their own set of uh, requirements, which everyone must follow. All those who are participants or users of their services. Similarly, you have Securities Commission, they have their regulations with security. You also have the Electricity Commission, which also has their own requirements of security. Anyone has got smart meter at, uh, at home? Does anyone know what a smart meter is? It just no, the meter, what is it? The meter that kind of like calculate how much uh, electric or like water that you use, right? Uh, electricity. Ah, At yeah. present, smart meters only for electricity installed by TNB. Not for everyone yet, but uh, some areas. So what a smart meter does, a smart meter will tell you exactly how much units of electricity have been consumed by each appliance, by each point. Okay, they are able to do, they are able to get into that much detail. Okay, now for a hacker or for a thief, it's very useful because if I can hack into a smart meter based on how the electricity is being used, I can know if somebody is at home, if they are at home, which room they are in, or they are moving from which room to which room. Okay, that much of detail I can gather if I hack into a smart meter. So that is why Electricity Commission also has requirements for security. Okay, right. Now cyber security for industry 4.0. We have talked a whole lot. Has anyone got any queries with regard to industry 4.0? Queries, please. Okay, what is industry 4.0? Why don't I ask? What is industry 4.0? Is it a marketing term? Does it actually mean something? Mm, does it refer to the automation of a lot of industries lately? Yes, but when you say automation, what do you mean? Mm, like tasks that you would um, usually do manually becomes automatic. Like, um, hmm. oh, wait, uh, let, let, let me think. <laughs> okay, you can make pancakes also. Right? Now you can make pancake using a pancake maker. Would that be automation? Anyone likes pancakes? Yeah. Please answer. <laughs> okay, so when we are talking of Industry 4.0, we are not just talking of automation, we are talking of digitalization together with that automation. So you can have automation by mechanical means also, but what we mean in industry 4.0 is that the automation is supported by electronic technology, which is leading to digitalization. And we are building in some level of uh, connectivity also, which means machines talk to machines. They talk to one another. It is not just based on a preset uh, set of conditions, which is what happened in an industry 1.0, 2.0, and even 3.0. 4.0 simply, although in, in general, it could be considered as a marketing term, but it is the uh, advancement of technology to enable machines, the machines for automation, to talk to one another. That's why you have a new uh, 
the new career prospect which has come in, which is called as RPA, Robotic Process Automation. Okay. So in Industry 4.0, you have certain challenges. So interconnectivity between IT and OT has increased. Who can tell me what is OT? Anyone, OT, what is OT? What is IT? IT, IT is information technology for OT is occupational therapy. No, OT is operational technology. Okay, so when we talk of OT, we are talking of industrial control systems or SCADA systems. Okay, the ones which control plants and machines. When I, when I use the term plants, I'm using it from an engineering point of view. So all your road rollers, your motor graders, your, um, your bottle cap processors, all of these are plants. Okay, so because there is connectivity between IT and OT, the hackers who were traditionally only attacking IT because the protocols started being used for OT also were able to, to attack OT also. So that is why there is an increased attack surface for adversaries. Okay, so security assessment of both IT and OT and connectivity is required. So when organizations have got IT and OT, they need to carry out an assessment of both. OT also needs to follow the same set of processes which IT follows or similar set of processes so that there is holistic security. Okay, the, uh, because of the connectivity uh, increase, the connect connectivity needs to be reliable and stable because of which you need to cater for periodic simulation tests, disaster recovery planning, higher bandwidths, etc. Okay, data security issues have greatly increased. So because of that, you have to have number of measures like a governance structure from board level, downwards, periodic assessments, all kinds of uh, policies, including for data governance and in-house cybersecurity skills, which is where you, all of you come in. Either you would contribute to in-house skills or you would contribute to uh, outsource skills. So you would be with consultants or service providers. Assuming you are going to follow a career in cybersecurity. Okay, all kinds of technologies like enterprise mobility management, Okay, now you want to pursue here in is now a very broad stream. Like anything else, you have to plan. But in this case, if you don't plan properly, you'll get lumped with something which you don't like to do. You will not be able to do a good job. And security is quite intensive. Okay, so you have to plan, you have to decide which stream you want to follow. There are many streams in security. Then you have to gain in uh, experience. So you have to select a suitable internship and the internship is not to spend time sitting in the office playing games on your mobile it is to actually gain experience those are those interns who came and did a good job for instance when i was in pwc or kpmg or accenture anyone who did a good job was often considered for uh, uh, you know being being employed in that company itself we used to use internship as a path for full employment. You would have to gain certifications. Education in security is not enough. Okay, the why you need to gain certifications because certifications test specific areas. Also let everyone else in the world know because certifications are international, just how competent you are. And the passing percentage for each certification is quite high. For instance, CISSP, if you don't get 90%, you don't pass. 
Okay, so it, the certifications are important. Okay, so you have to decide which stream you want, whether you want to go towards security governance or you want to go to, towards technical assessments, which is all your pen tests, et cetera, or you want to go towards implementation of systems. Okay, you have to decide which stream. Often enough, people uh, plan to do security systems or technical assessments or both. After that, they move to governance, which gives a much better capability to the person who moves to security governance after that. Okay, because security governance without any knowledge of technology is uh, being uh, shunted aside, right? Then certain useful certifications are all these. Okay, some of them are higher level certifications. You are not eligible for these at present. For instance, CISP requires five years of work experience, CISM similar. Okay, beginner certifications are these. Microsoft and Cisco Fundamental Certifications or ISACA CS, uh, CSX, Cybersecurity Fundamental Certificate, COMTIA Security Plus, which requires a little bit of experience. I suggest all of you do need to do a little bit of research to find out which one you are more comfortable with. For assessments, if you want to get to pen test, unless you have an aptitude for pen test, don't get into it. Okay, all pen testers have to be naughty. The very good guys don't make good pen, pen testers. Sorry. Okay, right. Any questions? Uh, I have a question. Uh, it's quite weird, but I need uh, a professional point of view uh, from this question. Yeah, okay. Sure. Okay. Um, my question is like, in order to become a very good, like quality cyber securities, one of my friends that told me that if you want to become a cyber securities, you need to become a hacker first. If you're able to become a hacker, you eventually, you will become a very good cyber securities. So based on your perspective as a professional, what do you think of this? Uh, I do not agree, unfortunately, with this point of view. Okay, a hacker is just one stream. You saw the streams I pointed out. Technical assessments, implementation, and governance. If you start off from being a hacker, then, um, and then move into governance, yes, you may be able to do a better job in governance. Similar case will exist if you start off by doing implementation and moving into security governance. You could also do the reverse. You could move from governance to uh, your technical assessments or implementation. Please keep in mind that both the technical assessment and implementation have got a ceiling. Governance does not have a ceiling. Okay, governance you move because governance gets into management. Management ceiling is only board. While technical ceilings are at CTO maximum. Okay, a lot of people don't want their CTOs to be terribly, terribly technical because people who are completely technical are not able to articulate business language. Okay, and uh, that you need to be a hacker first before getting into any one of the other aspects of security. Sorry, not required. Okay, thank you for the clarification. Welcome. If you have a knowledge of, of hacking, then uh, it's enough. Okay, any other uh, Yes, uh, sir. Is there any history said that blockchain technology has been breached by hackers? Yes. So it's still not secure, isn't it, sir? Nothing is secure. So if you think there is any anything known as 100% security, that's a fallacy. Okay. Okay, nothing is secure. Blockchain technology has also been breached uh, mm -hmm. not too long back. Um, at the end of the day, the blockchain is only as secure as the other aspects of it. You can make a blockchain with the, with the best key, with the best encryption algorithm, etc. But at the end, the end of the day, what you secure, how you keep that key is also important. You may not keep that key securely. Many ways to breach. Okay. Okay, sir. Got it, sir. Thank you. Welcome. Any other query?
Okay, since there are no further queries, I'll just end it with this. Cybersecurity is a great career. Okay, but don't take it if it is not something which interests you. Okay, okay so with so. that, uh, I end this talk. Uh, ladies, back to you. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Major Manish Chandra. I think you have covered uh, all the, the very comprehensively. Uh, and uh, we seriously thank you uh, for sharing with our students. Uh, but I have one question, sir, if you don't mind. Uh, just, uh, I would like to um, uh, request, if you could share, uh, I mean, if you're coming, since you're coming from a consulting perspective, uh, if let's say you, you have a client and then you want to look into their uh, security management, uh, you don't have to go so detailed, but roughly what are the uh, activities that normally a, a consultant will do in terms of security management? So it depends on what kind of scope it would be. Now, assuming it's a security posture assessment for the entire enterprise, okay? Then we'll find out how many areas are to be covered, how many departments are to be covered within the scope of the assessment. Assuming it is everything. Then we, we develop a plan to carry out the assessment work. We will do both technical assessments as well as governance assessments and physical security assessments. So common time for a reasonable size organization could be anything between three to four months. Okay, assessments will cover interviews, will cover questionnaires, will cover going through policies and procedures, will cover on-site surveys, will cover technical assessments and uh, discussions thereafter based on the results. Okay, the, the, the experience comes in not just in the assessment, but in the interpretation of the assessment as to what is not in place and if it is not in place, what could be the possible reasons it is not in place. And then you discuss with the client as to what uh, they could put in, which matches their corporate requirement as well as addresses the security. Thank you okay. so much. Yes, thank you, sir. <laughs> Welcome. Okay. All right. No, if there's no other question, I think uh, we will end the session, sir. Uh, thank you on behalf of Faculty of Business and Management and Ames University. We uh, thank you for I know, sparing your time to share with the students in your busy schedule. Uh, really, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Right. Okay, bye, sir. Thank you, sir, for sharing.